Previously on Hanging with Frugal Tina. Well, hello, welcome or welcome back to my kitchen. I'm happy you're here. We're doing a series called How Much Do I Have for Dinner? Because I'm on a fixed income and hey, things are subject to change, so I don't always know what my budget's gonna be. I try. So what I decided to do was put the numbers from three to 20 in a bowl and have the kids randomly choose what it is we're going to have for that night's budget. Uh, what I will do is I will shop my pantry first and my freezer first and use today's current prices and then from that we'll shop the store if we need to. Um, does it make financial sense when you're on a fixed income to continue to buy food when you have it? So that's what I'm going to do. If you see a name brand in my video, but I'm quoting a non-name brand price because if I were to buy it in that video, that is what I would have used. If I have something else, I got it on sale and at a good deal. I never pay full price if I can help it. All right, Eric, whoo, pick it up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. What we get, what's tonight's budget? $16. $16 for seven people. That's a healthy number. I can do a lot with that. All right, let's get it. Let's go. Let's go shopping. Hello, it's me. I'm back. We have decided what we're going to make is homemade Salisbury steak with a mushroom, onion, gravy, mashed potatoes, and green beans. And it's not the kind you get in the box either. So let's get it. Let's go. Let's cook now. All right, this is everything you're going to need to feed seven people. I am doubling a recipe. So when I put this up on the net, I'm going to put the um, smaller quantities down. You could double, half, triple, whatever you're going to do. Um, the things that I am charging myself for will be the ground beef, both of them, the green beans in the can, the onion, the mushrooms, the beef broth, the potatoes. Not really sure if I should charge myself for the two eggs, but we'll see. What is my freebies? My freebies is a little bit of breadcrumbs, some a uh, little bit of ketchup, salt and pepper, some Worcestershire, Worcestershire W sauce, soy sauce, and mustard. I'm not sure if I'm going with the Gouldens or the Dijon. It's going to be one of the two. Um, either or is fine. But that's everything you're going to need to make this yummy, yummy meal. So let's get right to it. Okay, first things first. I forgot to mention that I do have two tablespoons of flour as well for a freebie. Um, I'm going to do the prep work, get it out of the way. I'm going to dice the onion, peel and chop the potatoes for mashed potatoes, and wipe down the um, mushrooms. When all of that is done, we'll start cooking. Okay, so the recipe calls for a pound of ground beef, but we're a big family, so I'm doubling it. Um, I hate like heck to mix the ground beef here with the ground beef there, but I mix it with chicken all the time. Anyway, um, I bought this ground beef at a discount grocery store that I just found. This costs less than the um, 70 percent beef and I, I just couldn't believe it and I'm going to go back and I'm going to buy a whole bunch more. First pack of ground beef, second pound of ground beef in the bowl. I said pan before. So now all of the seasoning is going to go right in here right now. You got to put a half a cup of breadcrumbs. That was a quarter cup. Okay, two tablespoons of ketchup, which I've doubled. Okay. 
I have, it calls for one beaten egg. I have two. One tablespoon, I have two. W sauce. And I am using the Dollar General brand. Um, not because it's better or anything, but it doesn't have any anchovies in it. Or possibly in it. We did a teaspoon of soy. And I threw my spoons in the sink, so I'll eyeball it. Teaspoon of soy. And a teaspoon of mustard. I decided to go with the Goldens. Boop. Okay, and now it's time to mix. You don't want to over mix. You just want to uh, try not to handle it that much. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to use a fork uh, until I can't. And we'll go from there. So let me mix this up and I'll come back when it's all mixed. Okay, I forgot to tell you to add some pepper to taste. It also calls for a pinch of cayenne. I'm not doing that because I don't like the heat. Now I'm going to mix that up. Okay, so now we're going to make the patties. It works best if your hands are wet. So that's why you'll see my hands are wet and I just washed them. So we're going to make the patties traditionally Salisbury steaks or oblong, but you can make them any way you want. So there you go. And I usually just do that. It seems to cook better. All right. So let's get to making the patties. All right. That made 11 and a baby one. So let's get right to cooking. Now, most people would, would cook the hamburger first and then make the gravy to go on top. I do it in reverse because I want the gravy ready when my hamburgers are ready. And I want my hamburger sitting on the side doing whatever. So I'm going to let the hamburger sit like this. I'm going to cover them up and I'm going to put them in the refrigerator while I make the gravy. Sorry, I choked on my own mouth. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to let those sit in the refrigerator while I make the gravy. Okay, so we're going to make the gravy first. Said that weird gravy. <laughs> I got my two tablespoons of butter right here. We're going to add our cleaned mushrooms. That's why they're in that container. I wiped them all down. They're going in. And the onions are going in. Now I slice them. I was going to say longly, but I don't think that's the right word. I slice them not chopped. I don't know how to say it. And strings, shoelaces, I don't know. But with the mushrooms and this, that you're going to get them, you're going to get them wet. They're in here. Then we're going to cook out all the juice. They're going to then add flour and they're going to be dry again. And then we're going to make them wet again with the gravy. Now this is on a high heat right now just to get it up and then our, not high heat, medium high, and then you turn it down. See, it's all sizzly now. Now you go down to medium. While I continue to add the onions. I think I'm going to stop there. Okay, so we're going to cook these down. It's going to take anywhere between five to eight minutes to get these to where we want them to be. I turned it down too low. See how they're all wet now? 
We don't want any of that moisture. We want it all gone. So I'm going to let these cook down and then periodically I'll check back in. Okay, so they're starting to get translucent, but we still need it to go further because there's still liquid in the pan. We want these to get to a nice deep color. I nearly forgot to add the pinch of salt here. That helps get the moisture out. You see how that's coming along? Coming right along nicely. That's what we want right there. Almost there. Okay. We want it like that. So I, I cut the heat back and now we're going to add the flour. Two tablespoons. And we're going to cook this for about three minutes. Now remember we said I said wet to dry and back to wet again while we're at the dry stage right now. Okay, we're going to start adding things. It's looking a little a little dry, but it's supposed to. We're going to start adding the ingredients now. So we're going to stir in the broth. Now I had to double it because we made a bigger batch. Going to add, oh, I forgot I got to turn this back up to high. Just want to get it back to a boil. We're going to add ketchup. A little bit of Worcestershire in that one. Mix that around. Mixy, 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 mixy. So all we want to do is get this to a boil right now. As soon as it gets to a boil, then we're going to reduce the heat again. My potatoes are already done. They're sitting off camera. If you wanted to, you could add a packet of, of uh, beef gravy, but I really think you're not going to need it. I'm going to taste this in a minute because I have to add salt and pepper, but I want to I want to um, let it cook a little bit first because a lot of things I put in here had salt, but it might need pepper. Okay, so we brought it to a boil, so I'm going to tear it down to medium, and we're going to let this simmer until it's thickens slightly and reduces a little bit. Anywhere from about eight minutes. When it gets reduced and thickens, I'll be back to show you what that looks like. Okay, so this has thickened slightly. We don't want it super thick just yet because we're gonna, it's gonna thicken more after we put the, the uh, steaks in there. So it's, it's like halfway there, maybe a little more than halfway. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take this off the heat. You're going to transfer it to some heat safe vessel and then we're going to do the burgers. The reason I do this in reverse is when the hamburgers are done, we're going to pour the gravy right on top. Our burgers aren't going to be sitting there waiting 10 minutes for this and eight minutes for that. It's just brown the meat, throw the sauce on, or the gravy. So I'm going to transfer this to a heat safe bowl and then I'll be back. Okay, I have a medium high heat. A little bit of butter in there. Seems a little odd when, you are, when you're making burgers, but or bur beef meat. I keep calling them burgers and they're not. We're going to put these in here. And we want them to sear on both sides. Okay, so I add a little bit of garlic to it. The recipe doesn't call for garlic, but I want it on there, so I decided to add it last a minute. I'm going to cook this to two batches because I have a lot of Salisbury steaks. 
and we're not cooking them all the way through. We're just browning both sides. Approximately two to three minutes per side. Yeah, there we go. Boom. Just like that. I'm going to do the same thing to the others. And when they're, now this isn't done, it's partially cooked. When I get all the other ones partially cooked, I'll show you that. Okay, so I got all of my burgers browned on both sides. One came apart a little bit, but it'll be aight. I have my sauce and a pot, because I didn't have a, a, a safe enough vessel that could handle the heat. And we're gonna pour that right over top. Oh my goodness, how yummy does that look already? Yummy! And we're gonna let that cook for uh, five to eight minutes. And then it's gonna be eating time. I tasted the gravy. The gravy is absolutely spot on. Thought it was a little salty at first, but I tasted it with a little bit of the mashed potato. Oh, perfect. I was concerned that it was gonna to be too salty and it was not even. Okay, let that simmer and I'll be back. I don't know if you could see what I see, if the camera does it any justice, but that gravy has thickened up. The mushrooms and onions are floating around in there. Those Salisbury steaks are looking yummy. My green beans are done. My potatoes are done. The only thing left to do is put this on a plate and put it in our bellies. So let's get to getting. If you get any benefit at all from my content, you can help me out by clicking like, share, commenting, and definitely hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And there's my plate with all those mushrooms and onions and you name it and whatnots and doodads. She's looking yummy, yummy, yummy. And he said yummy. Let's get to the table and get to the taste test. I'll meet you at the table. Well, hello, we're at the table. Ain't it? What do you say? Well, hello. Well, hello. I have never made, even though I made this many times when my adult children were little, I have never made this for any of these kids. So it's a first for them and a really long time for me. So I'm gonna give that a little taste test to see what's going on. It's covered in mushrooms and onions and I could use a little bit more gravy on mine. I love gravy. I'm gonna try it with some green beans. You ready? Yep, I am. Got it, Aiden? Mm-hmm. Ready, set, go. Oh! Mmm! Mmm! That was a gravy explosion in my mouth! Yeah. That's D. D, 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 delicious. I'm gonna explain it. It's like. I know, you let the fly in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The gravy, mm. top shelf. Top shelf. On the, on the mashed potatoes, everything. Aiden, you got anything to say? Mm. I have mm. one thing to say. 100% try again. Oh, it's a must try. All right, well let me get the rest of my clan fed. So I'll see you at the wrap up. Well, dinner is over. Do you think they liked it? I think so. They ate so much. I thought I made too much food. Nope, didn't make too much. Eric ate so much, he tried to go back for his fifth helping. And all he could do was go, ugh, because he couldn't eat. And he wanted to. He's making noise over there now. So, I hope you try it. I know you'll like it. And don't forget, Click on my face below and become a subscriber. And I will continue to make more videos just like these. See you later, bye.